So ladies and gentlemen, as the Swahili people say, tutacheza. All right? Please come on stage and join us, guys. Please give them a big round of applause, okay? Come on, guys, get your groove going. Let's dance. Nervous now. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Merlin and Isaka. Please take your seats wherever you prefer. And yeah, now we will get back into the question we're here to unpack. Yet again, I will repeat the question How can airlines, airports, and policymakers leverage AI and technology to attract and develop the next generation of African aviators? This isn't just a theoretical discussion, it's real and it's very urgent. AI and tech are transforming aviation globally. And Africa cannot be left behind, which is why we are here today and John does what he does, okay? Our future workforce needs more than just opportunity. They need access, training, and support. Okay, so we'll start, ladies first, of course. Uh, Marilyn, please tell us a bit more about yourself. Um, thank you so much, Mahek. And just as Mahek said, my name is Marilyn. I am 22 years old. I am a final year student at Karume Institute of Science and Technology, pursuing bachelor's degree in aircraft maintenance engineering. And my passion in aviation started at a very young age, where I always dreamed about being a pilot because that's all I knew at that time. And throughout the years, over the years, I've came to realize that my dreams extend beyond cockpit because mm -hmm. I've came to knew that there's more into aviation and when I was in high school that's where I took the pivot to turn I too I, I met this high school teacher who told me about a story like he just asked me like Marilyn you know a garage man he repairs cars and still knows how to drive them so why can't you fly planes and still maintain them so since that time I just gained um, a strong commitment into mastering both aspects of flight, technical and operational aspects of flight. And here I am today, still chasing on my dreams. So yeah, I'm open to any internship programs right now. <laughs> That's great. And Bon Isaka, tell us more about yourself. Good afternoon to you all. It is my hope all of you are fine. I'm so excited to be here and to be in front of distinguished individuals. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Almighty God for granting us the breath to, to be here uh, and allowing us to be in, in, the, in this uh, big hall. Uh, secondly, I sincerely thank to Mr. John with his aviative team for giving me this chance, uh, for, for giving me this rare and prestigious opportunity to serve as an ambassador of Aviadev 2025. Thirdly, I wish to thank all the delegates present here since Wednesday. Your presence is what complies and signifies this occasion. Uh, my name is Ishaka Hari Salim. Current, I'm a first year student pursuing a bachelor degree in aircraft maintenance engineering at Karume Institute of Science and Technology. Apart, uh, uh, alongside my studies, I, I serve uh, in a student leadership as a Deputy Minister of Health, Environment, and Disaster Management, and a certified entrepreneur through Junior Achievement Africa. Uh, I'm proud to have been selected as the one of uh, only 30 students in Tanzania to participate in the prestigious NASA International Program scheduled to run from 20th June to 16th July. Uh, this opportunity represents significantly uh, 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 a long life in my journey toward uh, a career in aerospace. <laughs> my passion for aviation began in, uh, in my childhood in Dar es Salaam when I was ca captivated uh, by the planes flying 
near overhead than near the airports. This early fascination uh, uh, sparked a long life dream to become an aircraft designer. I'm committed to contributing to the development of African aviation sectors uh, by blending technical expertise, creativity, and the youth empowerment. Thank you. Thank you both. Your journeys are very inspiring, and we hope to see more of you in Aviadev. And yeah, please connect with people here, and we'd love to hear more about what you do as well. All right, now that we have about 10, 11 minutes to answer this question, we'll take it back to Marilyn. How can the aviation ecosystem and use, use AI and technology to uh, shape the next generation of African, young African aviators? So thank you again, Mahek. Um, I would start with airlines, you know, maintainers. So um, airlines needs to find more unique and modern ways that can attract the younger generation into aviation careers. And one of the best ways that it is more effective to use is by using gamified equipment. And how is it going? We see some of the airlines have been using this. For example, the Delta Airlines, it has, uh, it has developed a game called Lady Set Jet, and also Lufansa, excuse my pronunciation if it's wrong. It also, it also, devel it also uses an air control system-like game to evaluate candidates on how they perform under pressure, which it helps to improve engagement and screening accuracy. But the aim here is to replace the traditional interviews and resume screening with a more interactive simulation-based um, assessments that will test real aviation skills. Mm -hmm. So, may, for example, a game might simulate and ask a candidate to attend a flight emergency, or it might, it might ask a candidate to troubleshoot a certain fault in the system, and also maybe it can ask a player to arrange, a, plan a flight route and manage fuel, just something like that. So all these approaches, they evaluate, um, focus, problem solving, and also more qualities that are more essential in the aviation sector. So do you think that for lack of a better way to put this question, do you think that airlines or airports for the hiring process should skip the process of going through resumes and instead go through um, an AI-based app that can process applicants according to their guidelines or specifications? It's okay to use resumes, but what I'm trying to say here, if our point is to attract the younger generation, we have to be creative. And also, it's not just about being creative and attract the younger generation, but now, what's the advantage to the airlines? Um, the advantage to the airlines is that it helps them see the real skills and talents through these people. It gives a fair recruitment process because you get to see the, what a person is capable of. You get to see how he reacts, how he acts under pressure, how he focuses, how he can do something in like a practical skill, a more practical way of interviewing a person. Okay, thank you very much. And Isaka, what is your opinion on the same? Uh, uh, airlines should introduce uh, artificial intelligence powered flight simulators and the collaborative learning platforms. According to uh, Airbus and the ECAO research show that uh, uh, pilot and the technical uh, uh, techni technicians improves uh, the, uh, uh, the ability to, to, to do the, the uh, to, 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 to do the uh, uh, work uh, over 40 percent. So this. Uh, so airlines, uh, this simulator should not only provide realistic flight training,
but also serve as interactive learning platforms where students and the professionals can connect, exchange knowledge, share skills, and gain mentorship from experienced aviators. Mm -hmm. This will foster a strong and innovative uh, aviation community. The good example is in uh, Fly with Nascent uh, Simulators uh, at uh, Julius Nyerere International Airport. Uh, allows youth to explore uh, through hands in simulation. Uh, this creates interest uh, for the youth to be, to, to, to be in aviation sector. Uh, and this, uh, for this establishment of artificial intelligence simulators, it's, it have uh, many uh, positive effects. Uh, for example, to bring uh, an efficiency training uh, that's uh, the realistic flight training. Uh, uh, also, cost effective because, as we know, the real flight is so expensive. So, by establishing these uh, artificial intelligence simulators, can help us to 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 to, to minimize the cost. Uh, that, that's all. Thank you. And just for a more in-depth and a recap, do you think there's any negative effects to your point? Yes, there is, uh, there is a challenge that faces simulators because as, as you know, for establishment of uh, artificial intelligence simulators is so extensive, so it, uh, it is uh, costful. Among all the challenges, so it's, uh, it's costful, especially for the uh, underdeveloped the countries and the rural areas. Also, uh, among of the another challenge is limited uh, in internet access, because these uh, artificial intelligence simulators it need access to or, or to internet so as to function properly. So that's another challenge. Okay, and Marilyn, when you introduced yourself, you mentioned attending aviation workshops. So what role can tech enable mentorship and or online training platforms play in ensuring consistent access for students in more remote or, sorry, remote or undeserved regions? Okay, so I would say that, first of all, I don't encourage, no, I, I mean, a complete no technology in a place that a place has to have technology. Even if it's a small technology, they might not have advanced technology. They might, ha they might have just simple technology like accessing to, accessing to computers and YouTube, online. People can have phones. So when we talk about simple technology and not advanced technology like simulators and other things like AI, I would say that these students can still be inspired through the simple technology that they have. And at these places, we encourage, to, we encourage the students to use more uh, social platforms like YouTube. Uh, they can go and look for aviation videos and learn more about aviation industry. But also, they can get mentorship um, through different platforms. They, for example, I can meet with you, Mahek, when you're in Kenya and I am in Tanzania or in Zanzibar through a Zoom or Google Meet, and you can tell me more about aviation. So there are play things that are, they can be done just in a simple setup of technology. Okay, thank you very much. And we we'll have about two minutes left, so I have one last question for Isaka. Uh, you have been selected, one of the f 30 students in Tanzania to be selected for a NASA program. I'm sure that feels amazing, but what uh, role can technology or AI play in, in how, can it, how can African governments integrate uh, aerospace-level innovation into policy making and early education, let's say for about middle schoolers or primary students? Do you have any uh, opinion on how they can do that? I think that, uh, as we know, the uh, NASA program and the uh, aerospace, uh, they have connection. So for me, and there is several uh, advantage for that connection, and uh, 
for uh, I think the most advantage for the satellite and the uh, uh, satellites is so good because it gives the uh, security, it keeps the security issues in the airports, uh, also uh, airports planning because uh, in the airports there is uh, uh, monitoring of the runway. So this uh, NASA program and uh, aeros uh, uh, and aviation can help uh, the, to monitor runways and other things in the airport that can be helpful uh, in, the, in, 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 in this sector. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that brings our session to an end. We're actually right on time. The day goes, the red time's up. So John's gonna be very proud of us. Yay, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, let's go guys. Thank you, thank you so much for having us today. It was an honor and a privilege. Once again, please give Isaka and Merlin a big round of applause. Incredible. Thank you so much, Isaka. Thank you. I can't imagine doing this at your age. And Mahek, you're wise beyond your years. Thank you so much. So, yeah, please take your seats and uh, we'll get some pictures later. We're going to leave the stage up this afternoon to get some pictures. So,